So I'm going over the social welfare function from Hal Varian's chapter on social welfare. This is in one of the um, in one of the sections of that chapter. You have a social welfare function that looks something like this. So this looks big and messy, so how do we interpret it? Let's go through it and then let's connect it to an example, which is a roommate example that I'm going to use. So um, we have social welfare, yeah, we have social welfare, total social welfare is a function of everybody's social welfare that we're thinking about. Um, so let's just set up uh, our scenario. We're in a, uh, a house and there's roommates renting the house. As a matter of fact, there's three roommates renting this house and they have to make decisions collectively as a group. Um, there's two basic decisions they have to make. One is how do they divide up kitchen time because the kitchen's kind of small in this house and there can really only be one person in the kitchen at once. So who gets to cook in the kitchen at every single meal? And they want to they want to put together a schedule so that Karen gets it on Friday nights and Seth gets it on Saturday mornings, etc. And so how many meals do we have in the week? Well, three meals a day times seven days in the week. There's 21 meals and they have to divide that up in terms of who has rights to, um, to the kitchen for each meal. And then the second decision they have to make as roommates is about TV time. And there are 20 hours of tr primetime TV and they have very different tastes in terms of what they like to watch. One person likes to watch uh, cartoons, another likes to watch reality shows, and another likes to watch um, gory dramas. So they can't watch TV together, they have to divide up that shared space among them, and that's going to be the scenario that will interpret this social welfare function around. So we've got social welfare, and it's a function of everybody's utility. Well, how many people do we have? We have three people, so um, utility of person one is given here, and then dot dot dot, meaning we're adding up everybody's utility, so the next thing is utility of person number two. And then finally, we end at utility of the last person that we have to consider, which in this case is person number three. So um, N is going to be three three people to consider, so n equals three. So that will be the case whenever we see an n in this problem. So we see that we have, um, we're maximizing social welfare subject to some constraints. So the constraints are adding up everything from zero to n of whatever x i is. Um, so we know that we're adding up for every person something related to whatnot. So how might we interpret these constraints. Well, um, if we think back to our scenario, our, our constraints are there's only 21 meals in the week, assuming everybody has three meals a day, and we know that there's only 20 hours of primetime TV. So we need a constraint for each of those things. So we have as many constraints as we want. As a matter of fact, we have one through k constraints, and the way to interpret this is not an exponent. This is behaving a little bit more like a subscript where this is just representing this is our first constraint is one, our last constraint is k, and here in our scenario we only have two um, constrained things that we're trying to deal with, and so k is going to be two. Meals and TV hours are constrained. So what does this look like? Well, we've got x, which is going to be exogenous. So of course, the maximum amount of our constraints is going to be that exogenous variable. So this will be um, the total number of meals is going to be this exogenous variable. And we know there's 21 meals in a week. And this one is going to be the total number of TV hours. It's the hours per week that good shows are being offered. In which case, um, we have to think, what is x? What are these th decisions we're trying to make? And um, you might have already intuited this, but this is going to be the number of um, meals that, that are per week that are devoted to um, each of our three roommates. So let's give our roommates names. So we've got Talia, Ben, and Karen are our three roommates, and each of them needs to get some amount of meals per week and some amount of TV hours per week. And of course, 
Um, we've got X1, 1 is associated with meals, and then I is going to be associated with each of these three people. So Talia is going to get X1, 1, because Talia is person number one, meals per week that she gets to use the kitchen for. And same with Ben and Karen. For Ben, of course, Ben is person number two. And we see that I is a subscript, and that's going to be associated with the number of people. So um, this is going to be a ticker. It's going to behave like a ticker where we have X sub one is Talia, X sub two is Ben, and X sub three is Karen. So Ben gets X sub two, and then our exponent here is just representing the meals, the fact that this X is in relation to the number of meals he gets. And Karen, of course, gets X sub three because she is person number three, and the uh, superscript, uh, which, yeah, the superscript is one because one is associated with meals. And then we also have another constraint here with K, um, so <clears throat> K is going to be 2, um, X, what that means is we're going to have X superscript 2 is representing the fact that this X is not about meals, it's about TV hours. And the subscript is still going to be the person we're referring to. So Talia is person 1, and how many TV hours does she get? The 2 represents we're talking about TV hours. She gets X, X sub 1 superscript 2 TV hours. And let's just change the ticker, the subscript ticker, to get Ben and Karen's number of TV hours. Okay, so we've got Ben's X sub 2 TV hours and Karen's X sub 3 TV hours. In which case, we have to ask ourselves how many choice variables do we have in this problem? Well, we just listed our choice variables that we're deciding over, and so let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six different choice variables here. So let's actually uh, write those out just to be clear. So I just moved all these choice variables up under our maximization sign just to remind you that all of these are the choice variables. So what we have in terms of interpreting our constraints are um, when we add up everybody's meals, that needs to be equal to 21 meals. And then when we add up everybody's TV hours, that needs to be equal to the total number of primetime TV hours available in the week. Um, so I hope this helps you to interpret the social welfare function in the Varian book. Okay, and I'd, I'd like to actually write out these two constraints because they look like normal constraints when you actually write them out. So um, let's finalize this by writing out this first constraint. So we have the sum of everybody's meals has to be less than or equal to 21. So, so, this, so this constraint is just saying um, Talia's meal hours plus Ben's meal, meal hours plus Karen's meal hours have to be less than or equal to 21. That is that constraint. And the TV hour constraint is just going to be is just going to be Talia's TV hours plus Ben's TV hours plus Karen's TV hours has to be less than or equal to 20, which we know is going to be equal because you want to distribute the rights to every meal hour, even if one of the roommates can be nice and give their meal hours to someone else if they feel bad for their roommate. So, um, so that's an interpretation of this social welfare function with constraints.